So before jumping into our shape project, it's important to gather some basic background information about what shapes are and how they are used in art. In addition to shapes in art, it is also vital that we have an understanding of composition. What composition is, what artists mean when they talk about good composition or bad composition in art. So what is the art element of shape? Simply put, shape is created when a line is enclosed. Go back to that. All right, shape is created when a line is enclosed. Or you could say when two ends of a line join together, a shape is created. Important to know the roles that shapes can play in art. Shape is one of the seven elements of art, first and foremost. Shapes play an important role in the creation of drawings and paintings. Shapes affect composition. Shapes contribute to the balance within a work of art. And shapes can affect the overall mood and feeling in a work of art. Finally, shapes can be used to send a message to the viewer of an artwork. It's also important to know that all shapes are two-dimensional, that is, they have only length and width. In any artwork, all shapes will fall into one of two categories, geometric or organic. Well, let's talk about geometric shapes. These are shapes with straight edges, they sometimes have specific names associated with them, such as rectangles, triangles, and squares. But not always. Just because it says geometric shapes doesn't mean they're referring to the shapes that we know. They're mainly referring to shapes that have mostly straight edges. Organic shapes are drastically different when compared to geometric shapes. These shapes do not follow any rules, are not man-made, and most importantly, they have very curvy edges. They are sometimes the shapes that we find in nature, but not always. We can learn to see the world around us as shapes. Recognizing the shapes that we see can lead to better drawing and painting. We can easily recognize the chair simply based on its shape. The shape of the chair is somewhat complex. What if we broke the chair down into easier shapes and then pieced it back together? Here's another example of how this works. In this case, a ketchup bottle is drawn using very basic geometric shapes. The chair and the ketchup bottle are man-made objects made up of mostly geometric shapes. What about organic objects like this hand? The process is the same when drawing organic objects, like a hand. Notice how basic shapes are combined to make this organic shape. Here's another example of using shapes to build a drawing of a bird. positive and negative shapes. In this picture of a chair, we can gather an understanding of the term positive and negative shapes. Shapes defined by objects are positive shapes. Negative shapes are shapes defined around objects. So the positive shapes are the shapes that we see, and the negative shapes are the shapes around or in and between the positive shapes. Both are equally important in a composition. Both positive and negative shapes are sometimes also referred to as positive and negative spaces. So if you hear the phrase positive space, 
or negative space, you can think about that as positive shape or negative shape. I know that's a little bit confusing, but just wanted to mention that. So a positive and negative shapes help us understand what we are seeing. In addition to geometric shapes and organic shapes in art, shapes can also be referred to as being either static or dynamic. All right, so let's let's take a look at what this means. Static shapes look like they are resting and dormant. Okay, they're not moving at all. They're just kind of sitting there. They lack movement and energy. Um, oppos opposite of static are dynamic shapes. These shapes have energy. Okay, these shapes have energy. They appear to be moving. They feel like they're flowing with a slow rhythm or exploding at great speed. In the example of the squares, I would not say that they're exploding, but you can definitely get the feeling um, that they are falling, all right, or that they are being blown over. So they definitely appear to be moving, whereas the ones on the, on the left just appear to be sitting there. Here's some more examples of static and dynamic shapes. All right, so static and dynamic, okay? Shapes are just kind of sitting there. Now, because of the shapes have a lot of angles on them, they appear to be sort of moving. So you would say that they're, they're more dynamic. Static, dynamic. Static, very dynamic. Lots of motion going on in these shapes. If you look at this painting from a distance, it almost appears to be three-dimensional. But if you look up, close they're just flat two-dimensional shapes but they're very dynamic so they're both they're, so they're organic right they're not geometric they're organic and they're also dynamic so now let's take a look at some famous artists and we both can automatically recognize this one pablo picasso Famous artists who used a lot of flat two-dimensional shapes in their artwork. So Spanish painter Pablo Picasso intentionally transformed everyday scenery and objects into abstract images using flat two-dimensional shapes. Jacob Lawrence was an American painter who portrayed African-American historical subjects using simple, geometric, and extremely dynamic shapes. His shapes are always moving. Lots of things going on here. Very flat, two-dimensional. You've got a lot of angles. You can tell that the people are working. Here you can see a lot of movement in all of the characters. And again, all flat two-dimensional shapes, no shading, anything like that. Piet Mondrian, a Dutch painter, was famous for creating abstract paintings made from squares and rectangles. Interestingly, he started out painting uh, very realistic trees. Um, so he was actually, uh, you know, he was a, you know, he was a, he painted realistically. Uh, trees and other scenes before simplifying, he changed uh, to simplifying everyday objects into basic geometric shapes. You don't get any more simple than that. Henri Matisse, a French artist, was very well known for making beautiful paintings using geometric and organic shapes. Some of the dynamic shapes really help to show the motion of the piece. And here I'm just I'm just giving you a taste of artists that used um, shape mainly in their paintings. I mean, there's more than the ones I'm mentioning here, but these ones stand out the most to me. And then finally, we wanted to find a current, an actual an actual current artist who's currently working. She's also a professor. It's Kara Walker. Uh, currently, an artist and professor today is most famous for her paper cutout silhouette shapes. So these are actually drawn and cut out out of paper. 
most of which are very realistic and dynamic. Realistic meaning we can see and recognize the shapes. Dynamic meaning that they're in motion. So that's pretty cool. All right, so moving a little bit away from shape, you want to talk about something that's really important, and that is composition. All right, we all need to have a very good understanding of what composition is why is it why it's important and how does it pertain to what we are going to do with our project on shape composition what do we mean composition what is composition in art by definition composition is the way visual elements in an artwork are arranged so why is composition important in art why is it important? It's important for several reasons, probably more reasons than I'm going to mention. Number one, I think, is that it guides the viewer's eye through the artwork. That's a, no matter what, even if it's unintentional, you are guiding the viewer's eye through your artwork by the composition that you create. Sometimes it doesn't do a very good job of guiding the viewer's eye, and other times it does do a good job. It helps the viewer see what is important. A good composition is a balanced arrangement of both positive and negative shapes. And again, remember, or space. Here are a few examples of good and bad composition. All right, so generally speaking, it is not wise to place your main subject or subjects directly in the middle of your composition, or you could say directly in the middle of your paper, or if you're working on a computer, directly in the middle of your canvas. Um, so the bird is like smack dab in the middle, but on the right side, it's like a little bit off to the left. So we would think that we would say that the composition on the right here is, a, is more effective. Here's another pretty drastic example. That's a horrible composition, putting the bird, but, you know, nicely painted. Okay, that's fine. But compositionally, it's a very unattractive composition with the main subject directly in the middle of the paper or canvas. Another, uh, this is an example of a very famous and wonderful composition by, Ed, I think, uh, Edgar Degas. I think. Anyway, this composition nicely moved, you know, it helps to move your eye through the piece. Um, and it, we definitely don't have a main subject directly in the center, which is good. There are other reasons why this composition is good, but, you know, we don't, we don't really need to get into it. I just wanted to show you some good examples. Terrible composition. The skull is directly in the middle of the paper. There's no overlapping. There's it's just, you look at the skull and you just sit there. Um, so not a great example of a good composition. Okay, so for the art project that you will be doing, we will be following four basic compositional rules. Number one, all right, so for the artwork you're gonna be doing, these are the four compositional rules. You want to use lots of size variety, objects that are small, medium, large, and extra large. You wanna have objects that overlap each other some objects are going off and coming onto the page and you want to have objects are repeated throughout the composition so you have repetition all right so let's let's take a look at several examples for each one of these compositional rules so that we can visualize what they mean so the first one is size variety Using size variety, you will want to create a composition, a composition that includes objects that are small, um, medium and large, and even extra large, like the wooden shelf and large vase. And in the second example, by contrast, even though these geometric forms are beautifully shaded, are beautifully rendered, the composition lacks any size variety as all of the forms are basically the same size. Again, wonderful, wonderfully shaded, very realistic, but uh, they could have done better by just adding some size variety in this one. 
So the second rule talks about making sure that we overlap our objects as much as possible when we make our compositions. Notice how the flowers overlap each other nicely in the foreground. In this simple still life painting, see how the objects overlap. Now the following examples demonstrate how boring a composition or arrangement can be when overlapping is absent. All right, there's not a whole lot going on here. They're just kind of sitting side by side. Compositionally, we would say boring. Are they painted well? Absolutely, yes. But the composition, it's a bit of a snooze fest. All right, next we'll talk about rule number three. Rule number three, objects going off and coming on to the page. All right, so I'm going to pull up all three of these examples here. No, both of them. Yeah, all three. So you can see, you can find that in each of these examples, in each of these, well, the one in the top left, it's not even a painting. Is that a painting? It's, I don't think it is. It's a photograph maybe, but you have the one of the vase, vases, you have the one vase going off of the page, or you could say it's coming onto the page, which helps make a nice composition. Um, the bird and the branches, the branches are coming onto the page, which helps the composition. You have trees that are going off of the page, that helps. Um, and in the bottom example, you have half of the woman completely go gone off of the page, and she's also coming onto the page in the bottom, and so is the other one. So that all, th that all three of these are great examples of objects going off, going off and coming onto the page, and you want to show that in your project as well. So that's rule number three, or guide number three. I don't like the term rule. It's just a guide, okay? So repetition. Repetition in art is one of the most powerful techniques that an artist can use to strengthen a composition. Repetition creates unity and harmony. Repetition leads the viewer's eyes. Repetition creates visual movement. It also promotes visual interest. That's just, oh, I'm going to go back to that automatically. So you definitely want to choose what objects you want to repeat when making your composition. That's another rule. You have to have repetition. It doesn't need to be like this, especially the man floating in the sky. That's like repeated 200 times, okay? Or even doesn't have to be like any of these examples. You just need to have some repetition. All right, some more examples of repetition. Repetition, repeating the delicious desserts, repeating the trees, repeating the guys smiling, repeating the orange canopy. I think it's called a canopy. It's probably called something else. Repetition creates visual interest. It captures the viewer's eye and guides the viewer's eye through the artwork. It's a very powerful compositional technique. So let's review what we know about shape. A shape is created when two ends of a line join together. It's really simple. Shapes are two-dimensional, having only length and width. Shapes play an important role in artwork. They balance art, send a message or a mood, and help to create an effective composition. Shapes are either geometric or organic. Shapes defined by objects are called positive shapes. Shapes defined around objects are negative shapes. Shapes can also be referred to as being either static or dynamic. Static shapes appear to sit still and dynamic, excuse me, um, uh, static shapes appear to sit still and show very little motion whereas dynamic shapes are full of energy and motion. Composition, the other very important piece. Composition is the way visual elements in an artwork are arranged. Composition guides the viewer's eye through your artwork. Composition helps the viewer see what is important. And a good composition is a balanced arrangement of both positive and negative shapes or space. All right, so for our project, there are four compositional rules. 
Okay, the first rule is size variety, small, medium, and large. Second rule or guide is overlapping objects. Third is some objects going off and coming onto the page. And finally, objects are repeated throughout the composition. Repetition. All right, here are some examples of great compositions. This probably doesn't make sense to you right now, but just all you need to know is that these are good compositions. You have items going off of the page, coming onto the page. You have a lot of size variety. You have tons of overlapping. Um, so all of these follow the four rules. So this would be when you do your picture or composition for your shape project, uh, you would want to follow all of those rules, just like these ones. More great compositions. Figures exploding off of the canvas, figures coming onto the canvas, tons of overlapping, size variety, all of that in all of these. All of these examples are, are good. All right, so this is going to get confusing. Don't worry about it now. But here is an example of a finished composition. That right there is a composition. You have overlapping, you have size variety, you have some items going off of the page. And from this, we create the shape project, that. And I'm not going to get into in this video how we go about doing it. That's in, That will be in videos to come. Here's another finished composition. And here's a finished product. So you will be making something like this in Photoshop. Not this picture, but using the technique. Do I have others? Final thoughts? Oh. Oh, very good. Oh, very good.